Hello and good evening for this Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 4 is over. But we're just getting started here on Live Long and Podcast. Oh, by the way, the title is Face the Strange. Uh, for our review of this episode, we got our great team here to break it all down. I'm Dave Mader, uh, a live stream here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, we're going to you know, bring in our whole team here. First up, we got the man whose color is definitely red. We got Adam Woodward. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How are you doing tonight, Adam? Pretty good. All right. Coming up next, we got uh, Dr. Truffles himself. We got Chris Worldmind Murphy. I like my Vesper martinis cold. Well, that's, that's, you stole my, my, my lead in here. Okay. And finally, uh, <laughs> she's our quiz admiral who loves her Vesper martinis ice cold. Uh, it's Ashley <laughs> Millard. Hello. It's nice Hello. to be back. Thanks for, yeah, we missed you last week, Ashley. Uh, and Michael uh, is uh, sitting out tonight uh, in the rotation. So uh, we don't have Michael with us, but, uh, you know, he's, he wished us well. And we'll catch up with him next time. With us in spirit. With us in spirit. Spoilers ahoy if you have not seen episode four of season five of Star Trek Discovery, Face the Strange. Go watch it and then come back and hear what we have to say about it. But uh, with that warning issued here, let's uh, talk about this one. Um, you know, let's. It was, how about we start with Ashley first? Uh, Ashley, how, how, you know, how how was this one for you? I know you were a big fan of last week's episode. Um, yeah, so. I mean, I like this one too. I always enjoy a time travel, time shifting type episode. Um, having all of the previous series, so it was nice to get one of those. I wish we had gotten some more of the older characters into it though would have been uh, nice to see some of the older ones like beyond um arium and yeah like i even said to kevin partway through the episode i said i'll die if if we get a scene with lorca <laughs> you like you'd be happy if we got a lorca scene. yeah 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 i don't know if we'll ever see jason isaacs anywhere near star trek again but uh probably you know. not never say never um okay yeah no that was that was kind of cool yeah like if um i'm trying to remember the guy who was like the half klingon guy um yeah i was gonna say i was, I was waiting for a scene where she just kind of like rekindle something with the bearded boyfriend from the first season whose name i ash? can't remember I, ash, ash tyler ash, ash, ash tyler, tyler. <sighs> like if there had been an ash tyler meets uh you know book oh what happens now <laughs> You know, so <laughs> get really complicated. Let's go over to a uh, world mind next. Uh, you know, uh, how, how, how was this episode for you, uh, Chris? Um, you know what? I was kind of at first uh, I heard it was going to be a timey wimey episode and I was like, eek, I don't know. But this is actually super entertaining and my favorite episode of the season so far. Um, I I had a blast watching it. It was great. Tons of Rainer screen time. Uh, his character was great through it. Yeah, I was a big fan of of the connections they were kind of pulling through, and but, you know, at the same time, it was like ah, this was a bit of a filler episode, but not quite. But it kind of felt like one at the end of it. Yeah. Um, okay, and then Adam, I, I think you said you just finished watching this moments ago. Moments ago, I uh, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, as <clears throat> I think it started as a filler for me, but. You know, coming off last week, uh, I thought that this one would be more action oriented and entertaining uh, that way. And, I, and it was for me. And he, Chris, you started talking about connections and, and that connection between first officer and captain is so important. And they 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 close that circle on this episode. It was it was very good. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. They, they kind of like reach deep with it. Um, I, I enjoy all the various sort of you know time jumping which we'll get through as we review this episode but yeah the the ultimate closing of connections of and, and they're sort of solidifying those two being like trust fully trusting each other because at first it was like when rainer kind of gave like an order it, it sort of it i forget the exact line but it was like oh mutiny vibes this feels like mutiny vibes at just to like the first five minutes of the episode there was like something he said and it just gave me muni vibes 
and then by the end of the episode i'm like oh no those are completely squashed i feel was like, it like what if, what if my way is better is that was that yeah what you that's the uh, one that's yeah. the yeah. one yeah. <clears throat> yeah i didn't take it so much as a mutinous it's definitely insubordinate but uh it's it felt it's, like the Kelly, my wife said the exact same thing actually just okay. just she said this thing was going to be mutiny i said no no it won't be mutiny. We, I just think he was butting heads with her philosophically, but um, I will say, like in a four episode, okay, like we only get ten episodes this season. This is we're bringing in a brand new character in this Commander Rainer, and I think that this episode, not filler at all for me. I think it's exactly you needed this episode right now yeah. with these two uh, to kind of like, <clears throat> look at whatever their differences are, understanding how they're different, how they work together, how they're the same, and and building that trust by the end of the episode. I thought I was like, okay, good, like okay, like this is exactly what we kind of need, I think, to move forward with these two now, because um, otherwise, you know, you you like over a longer twenty six episode season, like in the old Trek days, I think they would have, you know, maybe sp sparsed this out more. You know, we would have. Uh, well, I seen... feel like they've done an episode like this in TNG. You know, like I, Voyager I did it an episode twice. Yeah, but Voyager did an episode almost very, very similar to this, uh, with Chicote as the protagonist of that particular episode, where he was jumping around time in Voyager, like when he went to engineering and Seska was there, and like he went to another section, and you know, the doctor didn't have his mobile emitter yet. So it's kind, you know, I, I think they did that towards like the end of that show. Uh, so it, it's kind of a um similar idea here of like kind of reliving the greatest hits of uh yeah. discoveries previous yeah, seasons but, but you know as, as some <clears throat> some of us on this channel are very hard on discovery and it, it tonight it took me back and going man i liked a lot of discovery mm -hmm. yeah are you who are you, who are you uh, uh well jody particularly but <laughs> <laughs> davin davin <laughs> You know, and uh, I'm definitely in, like, I, I still like the show, although I don't love it as much as <clears throat> the other treks, like, even compared to Strange New Worlds here in the modern era, I would still, I think, take a Strange New Worlds episode most times over a Discovery episode. But this one really worked well for me. I feel like it was kind of going back to an old school episode. Um, I, I It's a bottle episode, almost. You know, there's mm -hmm. one scene with uh, Lock and Maul at the very beginning of this episode that sort of is, you know, off, uh, you know, that sets it, the, it up. But otherwise, it is a bottle episode. It's completely within the Discovery sets. You know, ironically, you know to me tonight? they're on a beach in that opening scene. So it's a bottle episode with a beach. Yeah, <laughs> each in a, ship in a bottle. What um, occurred to me tonight is when I was watching the opening um, credits is that they haven't done like an opening, like a like in my opinion, a really cool opening sequence in, I, I'm guessing since what? Like what, what was the last show prior to like the newish Trek? Uh, uh, well, you, so we had Discovery that was the, the first of the new era. And then, yeah, so uh, prior to that, was it Voyager? Uh, Enterprise. 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 Okay, yeah. Enterprise. Okay, so when you think of that sequence opening, I know we, we don't like the song. I, I get that. Everybody doesn't like the song. We love but, it. Yeah. Um, I've got but, faith at the heart. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I, okay. Yeah, what are you talking about? I'm not going to hold it down no more. No, they're not gonna change my mind. But so what I'm just saying here is like this animation or this, the, you know, that we're seeing with Picard, uh, this one for sure, uh, and I think Strange New Worlds, can't remember now. Um, very different kind of openings than we're used to. When you know, think of Deep Space Nine. I love that that opening sequence, like the teasers. Or you, you mean? Oh, you may actually mean the title sequence. Title sequence, yeah. You know. I hate Discovery's title sequence. Oh, really? Yeah. I love it. yeah. Oh, no, sorry. It's... Discovery's I don't I don't like. I'm saying I Deep Space Nine I loved. Yes, me too. You know, Voyagers I loved. Right. I even prefer Enterprise. Enterprise. Uh, I, I like maybe that if we're almost like have enough shows here, we could almost do a tier ranking of intro sequences. Yeah. Um, at, uh, Davin's marking it in his schedule as yeah, we he's like, Whoa, well, we're, oh, we're ranking all the intro sequences. Okay, good, good, good. You know, DS9 uh, S tier, S tier, S tier, Voyager S tier. Um, <laughs> and then he'd be like, Discovery F tier, and I'd probably be along with that because I, I it's more the music in the discovery intro and how long it goes and the 58 uh, executive producers we have to get through in those credits you know so uh but like i don't mind you, the animation, know you can so. skip them right no i no. we do but we still watch them <laughs> i did there's no i don't skip. watch them i skip them every single time 
Yeah, I know. It's uh, we we were we were trying to get Kevin always to watch the Enterprise intro before every Enterprise review, but he said he always skipped it, which I said it was cheating. <laughs> I have uh, never watched the full Enterprise intro ever in my life so because good. I get like so five notes into that song and I go skip. You should it's probably got, just read it and watch it because it's very good. It's actually very good. The end, like the end without this, I, I don't mind the song, but it's you know kind of strange for a Star Trek show. The season what three when they sped it up, it, it actually goes oh, and it got even worse. Oh, God, yeah. that's worse. They did a like a <laughs> remix here. It's been a long, long. It's you know, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. They added an electric tambourine, like they did with the DS9 theme. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> no, we've been through all that. But back to um, this episode of Discovery. Um, yeah, like I, I'm still really high on this episode. I don't think it's a perfect episode, but it's pretty good. Um, and, and it's close uh, to near perfect. Out of, out of all of Discovery's episodes, it's like high top five for me. Yeah, I think so too. I think this might end up being. I think I'm in the nines, guys. Like we'll see by the end here. But like you know, I am I am I reaching a ten? Uh, only a Michael Chan appearance it, could have possibly. It made actually that. made me laugh out loud several times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I think what's really working for me in this show is Rainer. Like I'm really liking the the contrast between him and Burnham and the rest of the crew, and sort of like I don't know them learning from each other. And kind of acknowledging mm -hmm. two philosophies kind of need to blend here, you know, because I find uh, Michael and a lot of the crew, you know, including Saru, sort of um, mono, like sort of one philosophy, you know, and I think having some more diversity of personalities is good, you know, except for maybe Jet Rena, who I always enjoy. Uh, she's kind of like a little different, but uh, otherwise they're all kind of, you know, pretty nice and loving each other and all that all the time uh so a little conflict but not you know in a in a bad way is uh is, is good to have so uh guys let's run through the, the the our screenshots like we love to do here just to remind ourselves everything that took place in this episode um uh of course there was a warning here about the flashing uh, images. images yeah that's true uh, for those suffering with epilepsy, I suppose. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, watch out. Um, and we get this flashback to start off 15 hours ago. So this is kind of how they got the tech that we saw them planting on Adira at the end of the previous episode. Uh, they being Locke and Maul. Um, as we see them buying this, this device that we'll find out is the bug from this kind of black ops dealer. I don't recognize his species i don't think he kind of looks like a scroll from i was gonna say uh, it looks like a scroll kind of looks like an orion well he, yeah kinda. orions don't have that texture but um, maybe he's like a half cardassian half orion, half orion half something yeah yeah maybe or something completely new i'm not sure but um i don't <laughs> off the off the bat i don't recognize him but anyway they're they're buying it from from him and they give him the latinum when he's kind of a you know he's not a nice black market dealer guy uh but as soon as they give him um he, he like you saw he was raising the price afterwards and then you know basically we find out that uh he used to sell weapons to the emerald chain that they used against uh malls like you know family when she was younger so this is kind of a, a retribution move uh on their part as he gets like poisoned basically <laughs> by touching the latinum and um uh, and then you know there's a bit of a you know them embrace just, just kind of watch him die very coldly um and uh, you know they're 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 looking forward to getting the tech, the progenitor tech, of course, is what they're all after. And then they're going to you know be able to live their life on in peace without ever being run, um, fugitives again. Is kind of what we're told here. Yeah, they um, get so rich, and she kisses her gummy bear, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I saw I, I saw a theory that says like one theory was that he, is he a brain? Is one theory that's out there right now? I'm like I don't think so, but you know who knows? Like because uh, they keep mentioning the brain in the season over and over and over again, so it's it seems like something's gonna happen with the brain. Um, but I always thought that the brain had like snouts, like you know, kind of like a dog does, right? Like a <clears> kind of elongated <throat> face, because that's why they wear that big helmet. So anyway that's just a theory that's out there nothing to corroborate that um anyway so we see how this tech then uh you know we go 15 hours ahead i guess to adira who's the one who ended up bringing this on board from trill um you know and she's uh, on the phone here with uh gray or they are on the phone with gray 
uh and um and it's uh you know i was like they're kind of, i thought the episode from the screenshots earlier in the week was going to be more about this i'm glad it yeah me wasn't. too me <laughs> me too i thought we were going to get way more heavier on the like Oh, are we going to have a time loop where she just kind of relives her breakup with Gray over and over again? Because that's going to oh. be fun. God, I'm glad we didn't get that. That would but, be yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, and and it wasn't that. They're just kind of like, you know, we're seeing that they're talking on the phone, they're friends, and they're moving past it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Excellent. And then we see that the bug is kind of, you know, because um, the deer gets called to the bridge or whatever. And um, and so the bug is moving throughout the ship. We get to stay here on the bridge with uh, Rainer. Basically, you know, everyone hates Rainer is kind of like the vibe we're getting here on the bridge, like from Detmer, a Washington. Um, you know, he's you know, he's kind of short with people, rude, dismissive um, and, uh, you know, not doing the way the things the way, you know, Michael Burnham would do them right as you know make him her. make him burn him razor eyebrows at him you know mm -hmm. just really she just is... giving him the old eyebrow raise like what are you doing yeah uh you know it, it, like i think um is it reese That's he's like i got an idea here and uh and he's like you don't know if your ideas make sense it's all speculative and then we're this is where we're about Burnham. facts we work we're here about facts, facts. Not speculating. So she she wants to go see him in the ready room. Um, ironically, I this didn't like up... this. I I want to I want to speak on this. I wasn't a fan that they just teleported to the ready room. I kind of missed the walk as well. I, I got to tell you, I I feel the same on this. I, I I think it's just too easy to move around the ship now. Yeah, yeah. Like, why couldn't we just walk the like ten feet? Why are we wasting <laughs> energy to go boop boop and go like flash into the room? Like, I, uh... I get it. I get lighting people walking. And all that stuff is a difficult thing. Yeah, but engineering but... to the bridge, no problem. That takes a little bit of time. This is like, you know, a little short walk. I, yeah, I'm honestly exactly. good with it. I'm, I'm good with it. I, I'd rather those nacelles be attached again if I had to make a trade. Uh, <laughs> and and so that's... <laughs> Ashley, how do you feel? <laughs> I I don't really care either. Right. Like it, it doesn't really bother me. Progresses the story faster. I get it. But like, I don't know. It doesn't yeah. seem practical well you know you can also make the argument that like having transporters at all kind of like you know like takes away from them flying shuttles and having longer conversations that way too and stuff but um you know so but this is okay so anyway so she's given rainer a hard time in the ready room about hey like this is not the way i do things uh you know he he says you're a little too familiar this crew's a little too familiar a little too nice with each other you're not focused enough uh he gives her a little bit of his things you know uh spare me the i get you bullshit yeah, he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't, you know, because she was trying to like reach him, connect with him. And he's not having it. Uh, he's saying no time to be collaborative. There's no time to be collaborative. There's time to be decisive and disciplined. Right. And of course he's right. But of course, you know, he's also not universally correct in that assessment. You know, that there's there's more to it than that. Um, and I think that Burnham understands that as well. You know, uh, this is my favorite. She's like, you know, we saved the galaxy got you know many times save the federation the galaxy the galaxy you we've saved with, with our approach so why don't you give it a shot here why don't you try to fit in here to the to the synergy of this corporate culture but uh, but i also think that they're not i mean look having been through a lot of leadership changes in my career through you know you, you got to give somebody who's new into it a chance and they do bring new and they do bring what they've experienced and and I, I think that, you know, we can't forget this guy was a captain. Like he, he had done something to, you know, achieve that level of success. Um, and it's his style. It's a different style. That's all. And, yes, they have their way. But a first officer is like – we, we talked about it last week, Dave. A first officer is not meant to be all buddy-buddy with a crew. Right. Yeah. They can be a little bit more of an authoritarian yeah. figure. I also feel like a lot of what's talked about in this conflict, you know, that, that uh, Rainer comes from the, the period of the burn or the post the burn yeah. where things were tougher, harder. Um, but, but that's pretty recent. You know, I know that they, the things have improved now with the Federation, but I feel like this is almost like an allegory of boomers against younger generations too and like maybe mm -hmm. the philosophies of you know i've certainly had a lot of um you know people older than me being my boss throughout my career and uh there there was a different mentality for sure uh that you see that than today uh that's you know because a lot of it has kind of shifted uh so i feel like that's kind of what's also being 
you know, displayed here in a sort of an allegory. Um, yeah, anyway. but here's my argument against it. A good manager doesn't come in hot. A good manager comes in, learns the new people he's working with, and tailors their approach to them. I don't disagree. I just don't know if it's always true. But um, it, you're you going to have an easier time if you come in fresh and willing to listen, right? Than yeah. just coming in hot and trying to change everything, and especially on a, a, in very, a team or a crew that is already working well together and succeeding. He's very jealous. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you're not down with the Jellico approach, you're not down with the Rainer approach. I guess you know either, right? Like this is not four shifts, how... Dave. We need four shifts right now. We need <laughs> Delta Shift. Where is is there a problem with Delta Shift? Okay, let's move on here. Uh, as we go to engineering, Stamets working away, and the bug is coming along here. He notices it, uh, which goes into this panel here on engineering. Which um, I mean, immediately. Okay, cool. I get it. You you see curiously, like, is that? what looks like a spider on this ship why wouldn't you be like a immediate thought be like bink bink computer <laughs> what is that or captain i found something crawling on the ship that shouldn't be here this is clearly like a cross contamination of some kind what's going on here he just watches it disappear into the hall yeah well sure i yeah, because the plot demands it is the answer. Um, and, That's uh, fair. Uh, you know, is really all there is to it. But then I would have just... appreciated a warning, like a, a hello. But it, then things get glitchy. Then I would have been like, okay, cool. He tried, but it was you know a little too late. Like I would have been all right with that. I just he just didn't try at all, and it was like, why didn't you warn anybody? He's he's a uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. But um, <laughs> anyway, so. Um, with Burnham, uh, they, they back in the ready room talking to Rainer that there's this fluctuation and they try to beam to the bridge. And the, the moment they tried to beam to the bridge, I guess, is when this like bug temporal field thing activates and it kind of screws it up and kind of displaces <clears throat> them sort of in time with the whole events. And um, this is their first jump. Uh, they're always ending up back in the ready room. So it's kind of specific to the ship. Um, they try to go to the bridge because uh, they can't beam anywhere. Like they actually have to walk. So you guys got your walk from the ready room to the bridge, like you wanted, just not in the order you wanted it. Um, and we see we got the first glimpse of Saru down the ground. Of course, in the um, you know pre thirty uh, second century uniforms here, back in the twenty third century uniforms, as they were. This was the time, uh, I guess, you know, between six, season two and three, when um, when when Discovery was headed through the wormhole and going to the future. Uh, the Red Angel, you know, uh, they're following the Red Angel, which is Michael, um, you know, and she explains that here to Rainer. And that is our teaser for the episode, you know. So I was like, Cold okay. Open. That was our open. Um, uh, this episode was written by Sean Cochran, who I did look up. Uh, he also wrote, like, um, that short Calypso. If you remember, the Discovery had a few um, shorts many years ago that came out. Um, one with a Tribble, and this was the one that was like about Discovery in the future when it was abandoned, and and there was yeah, that, that's like, where I actually. Oh, uh, I that thought was we're one gonna, of my favorites. Yeah, we, I thought we were going to get there actually when they. Me were, too. Yeah. Yeah, the whole scene where they were in the future, I was like, oh, is this when like we saw Discovery yeah. in Calypso? And I thought because they're what... playing Kesara, Kesara, Doris Day, and and if you remember, that was part of that that episode as well. Yeah. So, but then they didn't do that. It was just kind of a possible future. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll come back to that. But it was interesting that Sean Cochran wrote this and that. Um, and Lee Rose is the director. So we come back to the bridge uh, with, uh, you know, Detmer's unconscious, but her eye is still open there. So it's kind of creepy. Um, uh, for the first three seasons, I, I exclusively called her robot eye now i kind of know her name so it's it's uh it's 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 fair. I, like I, I feel like um they've done more with those characters in the last three seasons but back then i was like who is she again um anyway then they they end up uh jumping back to the ready room here rayner and uh, burnham uh they're kind of trying to figure out they end up back here when discovery was still being built and we see it was actually built uh on the ground in in san francisco uh, at the academy um you know and we we run into one of these um engineers the starfleet corps of engineers i guess a construction guy uh you know, you know what i like about this was the interaction between 
like they, they didn't just try to hide, you know, that they were in different time zones and, you know, you don't talk to anybody because you can screw everything up. Uh, right. They were actually interacting. I like this a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know the inspection was today. Surprise, you know. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I love this helmet here with like the Starfleet uh, engineering symbol on 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 the top of it. There's a nice little uh, add-on they threw on here. I thought. Mm -hmm. um, and Rainer's like Rainer says something to him like, uh, "Tell tell," because he says, "Don't start on don't go to deck seven. It's not quite de ready." He's like, "That's where we're starting. We're going to deck seven first, and that's where we're going to tell your supervisors just to get rid of this guy." It's kind of funny, um, you know. Uh, that you know, Burnham See, like the toes. Too. You know, they're coming, figuring out, uh, they're kind of piecing this together as they're going, figuring out, you know, I think it's, it's Rainer who figures out the time bug idea or like explains it to Burnham that it's a, it's a relic of the, of uh, the temporal wars, which we knew it happened before the burn. Uh, we saw glimpses of that in Star Trek Voyager as well, uh, and Enterprise about the temporal cold war. Uh, and that it's a Krenum tech. Uh, they, they end up mentioning the Krenum from Voyager in this episode that this bug is actually, um, Delta quadrant stuff. It was so, also really interesting to, to, I mean, I don't know if it was that interesting, but it was interesting for me, is that uh, Rainer didn't, wouldn't have recognized San Francisco. You know, there's, there's no, there's no connection for him at all. With this, this. No, yeah. Like, we yeah. don't even know if he's ever been to Earth at all. Right. Mm. Right. Because in his time, Starfleet headquarters has never been on Earth, you know, yeah. Earth. Uh, so, um yeah, anyway, they, they have another jump here. They end up in the battle with Control uh, back at the end of Season 2 of Discovery. So, uh, you know, she's like, oh, that was a tough fight. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, remember when you said goodbye to Spock for like 30 minutes? Like, it was like, goodbye, Spock. Goodbye, <laughs> Michael Burnham. And they went on and on and on. And I was just like, okay, just go to the future already. Um, anyways, so they, met, they mentioned Stamets. And uh, they they say that Stamets, because he's been infused with the tardigrade DNA, he he's outside of time, so therefore this time jump isn't affecting him. He's jumping with them, but he's not like losing his memories each time. Okay, so don't you love how everything made sense? Yeah, you know, this, this was not like I I okay I'm I accept this. I it was mean, not convoluted. It was not contrived. It made sense. I was like, yeah, okay. You know, and they, 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 they were pretty consistent, you know, like I thought in general, the dialogue, how they went about solving like the, um, the science fiction of it all, I thought yeah. was, was, was consistent much better than I've seen in past episodes. of Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Chris, I mean, you, you, you asked a question before is like, well, why didn't they do it that way? Because that's the way it needed to be done. That was the script. I mean, that, but this, a lot in this episode, they took a little further to make it more plausible, I think. Yeah, no, the moment they start getting into the timey-wimey stuff, all the writing started made it, making sense, and it was, like, concise and tight and connected, and I was all aboard for it. It was just, like, those two little things in the beginning. I was like, eh, what is, why didn't they do this? But the moment they, they started going through this trip of, like, visiting or being placed in Discovery at certain points of time, I was like, okay, this is pretty awesome. I'm all aboard for this. I I like to see how how... You know, the moment they're on there, Burnham's starting to like track the time and the, and you think you don't quite get a sense of how long they're there for, but you do get an idea that they're there long enough. Like we see the Stamets scene and they go back to these two before they went to Stamets. She just started doing the time tracking. We By the time we go back to these two, they were like they've been gone through a couple cycles and they're like, this one's longer than the other ones. So, you know, you, you get that sort of. My, yeah, yeah that my TNG feeling by the end was thing. that it was like six hours because that's kind of what's explained to us that, you know, that's how much time went. Well, away yeah, it, in, in the end, it, it total was six hours. But like to them, it could it could be months, you know, they're every time they go through a cycle, it's like progressively getting longer, you know, so they've gone through a couple time jumps between the time of Stamets being in Med Bay and them going back to being like. How long? This one's going to be a little longer, so we've got so much time. So they're yeah. still piecing it together, trying to reach damage, and that's when they're like, "Hey, I think we're in a time zone where he should be in engineering." 
Right. Yeah. And we get some conversations here with Rainer and, and Burnham where she kind of explains like, you know, when she first came on board the ship, she was like, you know, this prisoner and, you know, was very nervous. And this ends up, you know, mattering later on in the episode that he has this backstory. Prisoner. She was more of a mutineer, but like, yeah, she was. Well, she was, uh, she, she came from prison and was kind of recruited as a specialist, you know, to sort of uh, right. be a consultant at the time. But yeah, she was kind of technically a prisoner in, in some, in some ways. Um, Anyway, so uh, so they, they figure out they need to go to the quarters, and Michael Burnham uses our little code here to get in. You know, but right in front of him, I mean, that's like shows a lot of trust. But like, part of me was all like, should we be giving him like command codes? Exactly. I, I was thinking exactly. Is this going to come back to bite her? Yeah. I didn't think that at all. I was like, no, she has to trust him. He's the first officer. Yeah. Um, I feel, I mean, as the first officer, he would have a bunch of those command codes. Yeah, just yeah, not to her quarters. Should, he should need hers, which overrides Well, his. she can change them. She could change them, and hopefully she does, because that would be the correct thing to do. Otherwise, HR is going to yeah. have a really mad time with her. Yeah. You better hope Book's not there when he coming out of the shower when he walks in. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, so th then they figured out that the next time that they're in here is uh, the Emerald Chain was was on on board the ship at the time. I guess this is the end of season three, and uh, so so we get a bit of action here with Rainer and uh, uh, Burnham fighting Emerald Chain guys. Uh, you know, and it was not bad. I thought you know it's one. There's a couple action fights in this uh, episode. It was it was okay. Like Burnham was definitely like laying down more of like a martial arts style butt whooping, and then yeah. Rainer's just like stage fighting kirk style like i'm gonna grab you and give you a good old right hand exactly yeah before his hand got aged uh ahead here but he ends up like he ends up almost getting uh taken out here but he's saved by jet reno who uh comes out of uh, you know here and uh she had some good lines in this episode like uh, when she hit this guy uh from the emerald chain and she goes get a better helmet get a better helmet the Jet Reno, you know, and she wants that Vesper Martini for uh, for for her trouble. Vesper Martini, oh. ice cold. Yeah. Ice cold. So uh, anyway, he kind of he he because I guess this does affect the timeline, right? The, the, what's explained to us in the episode is that this interaction would have been like sort of permanently put into the timeline because it, uh, only the last cycle would not be. That's kind of where we're no. Going. Okay, so if if a cycle completes then it's kind of locked in the timeline, right? right. So yes. whatever they're experiencing, if they do something that can mess up the timeline and they get, jump to the next cycle, then yeah, that could mess up the timeline. So they're being careful, but then they realize, oh no, the only way for us to do this is kind of by messing up the timeline. But if we do it this way, it'll never happen. It's like- No one will remember it anyway. So the, yeah. the final so the final cycle doesn't end up mattering, but Jet Reno did meet Rainer in this moment and that becomes part of the timeline now. It's a classic save game before final boss method. You know, you just save the game, you jump off a cliff to see what happens, you reload the game, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Jet, <laughs> you got the Doctor Who going there. The timey wimey of it all. It's um, true. Anyway, so then he jumps out here and he says, I told Jet I was a temp. <laughs> I was here. I was here. very Simon. Uh, and the next time period we go to after that is uh, clearly in the far future for Discovery. This is what we thought. Like, Jane and I were both watching. Go, oh, it's you know, it's gonna be the Calypso moment, or like when they, we, we got that short from uh, between season one and two. But no, um, this is just uh, I guess thirty years down the line, we find out you know learning from Zora who explains it all that you know th that unless um they get out of this time loop in this episode that you know lock and ball are going to end up getting the progenitor tech and they're going to end up you know destroying federation headquarters and killing them all and well no they you. don't they they sell the technology to the highest bidder which happens oh. to be the breen and the breen are the ones that destroy everything because ah. they're the breen <laughs> <laughs> because of the brain right yeah. uh, and maybe that's the only reason we're getting all these mentions of the brain doesn't necessarily make mean that Locke is a brain uh but uh, you, you guys uh, i i love zora i, I, I think certainly that, think Locke is a brain though sorry i didn't mean to cut you off adam that's, yeah i was thinking that too but what, what i was gonna say here is i love zora i love the character i love the fact that she misses the crew you know I, yeah it, it really goes to the whole you know when we used to have you know computer and you know you know, whatever it was just a boring voice answering questions now you have a personality and mm -hmm. it really 
you know, with all the AI stuff we're dealing with these days, that's, that's the, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a I'm a big fan of it. I, I get what you're saying. I love the fact that Zora <clears throat> is sort of a sentient being because yeah. I think that short episode, that short trek where, you know, she's off in the future by herself, that like really and she's characterized lonely. her. Yeah, yeah. And, it, it, and it's something I was, I've was i always wanted them to expand more in this show and they kind of just kind of skirt by it, don't quite do it. And this was a good like yeah. continuation of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was a big fan of this scene. It was probably my favorite scene in the whole episode. Yeah, like, and uh, we see Federation headquarters has been completely annihilated, all more or less. Like, there's a, there's a shell of it left. We see uh, what what we're told is a Breen, a 32nd century Breen ship here on the right hand side. You don't really get a great look at it, quite frankly, but it's uh, it's big and green, um, kind of like those Breen ships we see in uh, D Space Nine right now that we're covering at the end of right now uh, for the Dominion War on the D Space Nine podcast, which we're just wrapping up. Check that out on Mondays, guys. Um, anyway, and uh, and then Michael has, a, you know, after learning all this, the only thing that didn't make sense to me was in this time period, Stamets is dead, right? So Everybody's um, dead. So when Stamets jumped with them to this time period, is he just in his, a dead body? No, he just doesn't, like, he doesn't wake up. He's just non-existing. So he he doesn't, he doesn't wake up in this time period. He doesn't. Just, but he but but he he not, would wake up at a time period that he is alive in. More than likely, yes. Right. Okay. Like timey wimey doesn't quite make sense to me. But you know. Well. Uh, okay. So basically, those two made it to this timeline, but everybody's <clears throat> dead. Stamets should be there, but the reason why Stamets isn't jumping with. Rainer and Burnham is because Stamets didn't transport with Rainer. I know, Burnham, I know he's on a different right? jumping pattern here. He's he's not it's not only that he's on a different jumping pattern, he's not even jumping. It's just that his consciousness is doing like a quantum leap through his own bodies. You right. Know? But he's able to remember from each jump to the next jump. Yes, as yeah. long this as is his one body. of the jumps in the in the chain. But he, uh, yes, but his body would have to be here for him to jump into it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Right. Their bodies didn't need to be there to jump into it because they I know. Are physically I I no. I understand they're on different rules, but he, I guess, because he does. Rem so like he just went into he, like nothingness. I guess during this, he just jump. probably went to the next jumping period that they were at or he was you know unconscious because he was put on you know sleeping drugs and just the moment he wakes up he's like oh like which is i think he was in the the, the spore dry room is the next scene we see him and he's yeah. just kind of like well yeah and that's kind of where we're headed next because after they learn about this future and they had and rainer and, and uh burnham have more of the conversation about you know how she she ended up taking the chair you know and where she started to where she ended up um that's kind of talked about so they they figure out uh with zora's help that they can you know predict when the jumps are going to happen and all this kind of stuff so now they have some more information moving forward uh and we see like it's a it's it, they're not just moving through time but they're also moving through space and it's kind of like a weird cone timey wimey cyclical cone thing uh that they're going through so Temple anyway cone action they're getting ready and zora says you'll be jumping in three seconds and then that's what they do so yeah back with stam it's like he's alive and here. her final words before she, they jump is like you have to fix it all please please, please. fix it yeah like, yeah that was so heartbreaking oh yeah. yeah no yeah zora said it didn't go too well for everybody so um even her, you know. So, anyway, so now we got Stamets back. He's alive again, everybody. Don't worry. And, Best uh, conversation of the episode, right here. Yeah, her and Jet, him and Jet Reno, uh, going out. What she calls him, Doctor Truffles. That was a good. One. <laughs> uh, you know, this, uh, this also was one of my like. It was like one great scene followed by an, an equally great scene. These two going to get like I laughed so hard during well, the like the dialogue of this scene. What's so interesting to me is that, like, basically, um, you know, Tig Notaro came into this show and she kind of became what I think they wanted Stamets to be originally, which is kind of like this sarcastic, funny, quippy person. But it ended up not being what Stamets is really, 
character is in the dynamic of the show and it became jet reno's thing and she just gives it to him all the time she's like oh yeah like it's um is that what's going on she's like you know you just told me to re fix the warp coil main thing i've done a million times and you said it quite dramatically i have to put it too well, have you, you know? seen her stand up ever like i don't think so no yeah it's so she's, good she's she, exactly she's she's pretty quick so i i won i i don't know I, i'd love to know whether she is scripted or she comes up with lines i'd love to know that but yeah like and so she's just like are you jumping through time are you are you stuck are you stuck in a time loop <laughs> are you stuck in a time <laughs> loop because he's me. asking these questions that uh line no killed me i lost so she, hard but she she is shrugging it off on like well maybe he's just think he's just thinking theoretically like maybe she does that sometimes too so um part of me was kind of hoping she would great. figure it out and then sort of like remember it, but keep it on the down low. <laughs> and we'd we get yeah. this scene later when everything's all hunky dory. And it's just like her sitting at the bar and Rainer orders her, you know, a Vesper martini, ice cold. Ice cold. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, then then Michael Burnham shows they finally catch up with Stamets in engineering, uh, which he orders a there's a spore breach, everybody. Oh. This is spore breach. Evacuate now, or our mushrooms will grow on your lung. Yes, go, 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 go. Yeah, uh, mushrooms will grow in your lungs, which apparently is not a thing. So, uh, but the, they don't in know. High that. school, they told us if we smoked mushrooms, we'd go blind. But nothing about lungs. Nothing about mushrooms growing in our lungs. Lungs. Maybe you didn't have the spores. Mm. Well, uh, it's probably about the last of us or something. I didn't know you could even smoke mushrooms. Is that a thing? So. You don't. You don't smoke mushrooms. <laughs> do not. You cannot. You should not. You don't do that. Okay. Good safety tip. Thanks, Murphy. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so anyway, so they just in small quantities and then grow larger as you need. We get our first look at the book, the bug in this scene uh, as they try. To, like, well, well Rainer just tries to grab it. Uh, which Stamets ends up stopping him. And he goes, no, this could go really bad. Uh, I had to pull this. If removed improperly, incalculable timelines might converge at once, ripping every molecule around us into infinite directions over and over again for eternity. Sounds bad. Sounds <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh, sounds like hell. <laughs> I was just loving, that was the best line for me. Sounds bad. You know, don't want to do that. Um, you know, so, and then, he, but, but Michael Burnham has the data, uh, she can figure out and he can, you know, she can help Stamets get it. Uh, but there's t only 20 seconds left in the cycle. So they need to keep re-meeting up. Uh, so they keep saying, let's meet up on deck 13 because this is the place where no normally there are no people or m not many crew members and they can kind of, uh, you know, hopefully not have too many timeline, you know, interactions at this way. So we get our next jump. Which you know, we see Stamets is back in the 32nd century uniform. Um, they're figuring, I don't know, there's just more exposition here on what they need to do and how they're gonna get how they're gonna get there. They have to make a device and they have to get the holodeck uh fluid, like the 32nd century holodeck fluid in order to make the device. So Michael Burnham goes to her quarters. We see a shot of Grudge. Uh, she you know, she runs in, she gets it. I, I like that like brief moment she looks at Grudge and it's like, oh no, is Grudge gonna rat on her? <laughs> is this a timeline is this gonna affect the timeline yeah. yeah um anyway so she gets it uh and then uh david ayala shows up uh book um and i was like oh man i don't have i i do not look like this with my shirt off even though i'm a fellow david i uh, can't uh, hold it up to david ayala um you know it uh it, this is when this is at a time period i guess where you know they're still fully you know boyfriend girlfriend not so much on the rocks um and uh you know like, there's kind of, you know i think it's it's gonna be an awkward situation for her but i felt like you know he says i love you they have a kiss and you know she says i love you back and i felt like there was you know she was kind of reconsidering if you know do i want to get back together with book maybe when i get back to my own time and uh and everything am i misreading that or it felt like a bit like that, but also felt more like she was just like, I got to play it cool and can't, you know, show my cards. So I, I'm glad this scene was quick. Me yeah. too, but but I didn't mind it. Um, you know, it just uh, but I, I'm kind of like I'm trying to figure out where their relationship is going by the end of the season. Ashley, do you have any predictions? Oh, I think they'll get back together. And I, and I don't think she was 
lying here or trying to play it cool or whatever. I think she does love him, but also is very mad at him and doesn't trust him. And you can feel all those things at once. And she's trying to work through that, but she does still love him. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, and so she hands she, she gets off there and she goes back to engineering. Um, oh yeah, they, there was another spore alert. Spore alert! Everyone out and stab it says I'm no, just no, no, surprised. Was, I think he he just comes in and he's just like everybody get out. I'm Every really really cranky. Oh, that yeah. comes later. That comes later uh, in the next in the in the later scene. But this is the one where he's like, yeah, I told them another spore alert and mushrooms would grow in their lungs, and that's not true. And like, he's kind of surprised nobody on his staff knows that. So. <laughs> But it was working to his advantage. Uh, this, you know, this this uh, ensign tries to walk in uh, on them, and they're like, "Get out!" Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she just like looks at it and turns around. It's hilarious. Um, so they make their little device, and they're about to use it. Right? They try to get close enough, but there's a force field. Um, temporal force field. Temporal force field. They figure out that anything that gets close to this is going to just disintegrate into dust, uh, you know, including organic. So it's not just a matter of going up and attaching the device to the bug, that they got to do something else. Um, and this is where they come up with their theory that they need to um, go into warp, but then, you know, break the warp bubble, which will uh, protect them from relativity. And then the time machine can't keep up with it. But all this made sense to me. Like I thought that like all the, the techno babble, the science, the science fiction of it was good um, and well explained. And it was, it was, you could follow it. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, they got to get to the bridge and, and go to warp. And because this particular cycle is the longest, it's probably the best one to do it. However, maybe a different time period would have worked better too. I don't know. You know what? Again, it's interesting when you think about how far they've come with explaining techno stuff. Yeah. You know, back in next gen, it was like data, you know, interpreting something for everybody so everybody got it. And yeah. back in the old original series, it was Spock doing that. Right. Uh, you know, you, you know, or maybe it was, maybe it was McCoy. Well, you, 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 you get both, right? You get like a Spock or a data type who explained it in a, in a, in a very scientific way. And then there'd be a character like, scotty yeah. or bones or somebody to kind of like you know Jordy. are you saying Jordy. Yeah. yeah right yeah. or Jordy, uh yes. who would explain it explain it oh you know even if you go back to like I, I think about ghostbusters and like how egon would explain things and then you got ray who's kind of more like that middle ground uh who can you know put it in yeah. more layman's terms but but in this series we've got like or in this episode particularly we got three of them just talking it out well and yeah. right you know, and I think the fact that well, Michael Burnham is a science officer by trade, so she's of course be able to keep up with it. But Rainer, I get the impression is not a science officer originally, yeah. so he's like, "What's happening?" Uh, <laughs> but he knows he knows more about um, you know the the science of thing. I guess uh, no, more about like the the burn and temporal cold war and the and, temporal stuff yeah yeah he knows more about that so um anyway so we find out that the time period that they're going to try to pull off their little uh plan to save the day is uh when Lorca was still in command of the ship pretty early days back in season one um and that Mir but she, but Lorca's not here he's on an away mission with saru apparently uh and landry is also mentioned uh, remember her uh she mm -hmm. got killed by the tardigrade <laughs> i think uh way back when um anyway and another Battlestar Galactica alumni that the, the uh, actress who played Oh that. that's uh she played Tori in Battlestar. She right? played Tori in Battlestar. Yeah. yeah. So but uh she was uh, who ended up being one of the the Cylons but um anyway so so they mentioned Lork. I love I I loved uh, Burnham's reaction to Lorca's name. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lorca. Like that was a deep cut. Um, and so they got to try to do this. So, okay. So Michael Burnham has to get to the bridge and convince Miriam or Ariam, I'm sorry, Ariam that, uh, that this is going to work. They, because Ariam is in command. So she's going to figure it out. Well, Stamets and, um, and Rainer are going to go off and do the engineering part of this mission. And they, they even give the old style communicator, like, you know, the flip communicator, uh, from the 23rd century. Stamets has a couple of those stashed away. Cause he's, yeah, he's like, waters. take mine. I'll just replicate another one. And then Linus shows up here. This is great. Uh, so, so we <laughs> had love seen, Linus. Yeah. Linus was in, see, only was introduced in season two, but this, this flashback or whatever you want to call it kind of shows us here that he was on the ship from, uh, the beginning. Um, so anyway, and then this awkward thing here, this in in the <laughs> turbo lift with them, 
it's so funny you know and he's just like red is your color red is definitely your color <laughs> Bitch. yeah uh and just then somebody grabs the turbo lift doors before they can close guess who it is season one michael burnham uh you know this was i actually i thought pretty well done in terms of um mm -hmm. how this all played out how the effects looked especially when they start fighting you know yeah. everything pretty... was, everything was good up until she like nerve pinches her and takes her out and then she's holding her head and i'm just like, that was weird that was so yeah. weird looking yeah and i was like was. just lay her down on the ground give us a two cut shot guys yeah i don't need this like third body perspective outside floaty head on somebody else's body like it was so weird and standout-ish but everything prior to that like the whole fight scene how it was choreographed was really good um yeah to me this is the was... battle of the uniforms <laughs> right well we know which uniform wins <laughs> we do <laughs> we do <laughs> You know, um, yeah, like, there's this mo one particular shot. You can kind of tell that's that's not Sadiqa Martin Green, but, uh, you know, it's pretty. Yeah, there's a, there a handful of those, but not, you know, it's, you know, what do you yeah, only do? if you really freeze it and look at it closely. Yeah. But, you know, mostly it works and mostly it looks good. Um, and and they both get their licks in, I would say, you know, in this. But finally, she gives her like the, the, the nerve pinch and then sets her yeah. head down. Uh, yeah, weird. I guess this does yeah. look weird. It, uh, it was. It? It looked off. I was like, "Oh, the it wasn't." In the good. still did... image, it doesn't look that bad. But... Yeah. Okay. I didn't really notice it at the time, but now that even here, I, I'm like, now that I'm analyzing it, I'm like, yeah, you're right. They just stuck her head onto like an yeah. extra's body here. It's like the lighting's room. just slightly off. I don't know. It's so yeah. yeah. It's right. The size is wrong. Yeah, and she just leaves her in the there in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Surely nobody will find this. I guess Reese finds her, right? Um, so yeah. um, anyway, so then th then we get Stam. This is where Stamets says, I'm grumpy. All right. I am very grumpy. Just absolutely irate. And I need to be left alone. <laughs> he uh, was he, very was, grumpy in season one. He yes, was. He was. That was that, he was more surly pre-tardigrade DNA. Yeah. More surly before the mushrooms got in his system and chilled him out to the stone <laughs> kind of what's going on? Oh, are we fixing this sciencey thing? Okay. Yeah. Well, and then Rainer's like, hey, can you fix it? Fix it? And he's like, I'm trying. Uh, but basically, Rainer just gives more of his tough love approach. I would you know, if you want to call I'm it. I'm very that. stressed, Dave. I'm very stressed. I'm very stressed. Don't you know it's hard to be me? And da 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 da. <laughs> and and Rainer's like, okay man i'm so this is where he, i think he decides i'm gonna try to do it michael burnham style you know like hey exactly what's up? you know do you like he, you know he, he's uh we'll do it together man we'll, we'll do, do it together do you mean do you mean to do something over here and he's you know he's learning to be a little bit more accommodating and um collaborative or whatever you want to say um and it works and, and, and stamets responds to it and he's like okay is that is that what you need sure and so he just he goes with it right um it's almost as if it's human nature that we work better when we're encouraged rather than when we're beaten down true but i think that uh the the counter to that is that right? you, you, you still you know uh you can sometimes i guess you I, I don't disagree with encouragement and all those things but you still have to accomplish the mission uh you yes. know uh no matter what so it's you know it's just about how you're gonna get there so um I don't know if there's room for radical thoughts like that in starfleet ashley i don't know <laughs> i don't know you know anyway so sorry uh, that was a positive uh view of the future i don't think that's what star trek's about <laughs> i don't know <laughs> not. that's not maybe not at all maybe not <laughs> Uh, so anyway, Michael gets to the bridge, uh, which, um, you know, they're all, of course, in their season one garb. They've done a pretty good job here with uh, uh, Tilly making her look uh, as she did then. Um, brought, I don't, I, there was two actresses who played Mir Ariam. I'm not sure which one was back for this episode. And they even had that other guy, the, the old communications officer guy, uh, who I forget his name. But he's here. Um, they Detmer. said his name in the scene, too. I forget. Yeah, they say his name, but he's been gone for a while, right? They replaced him. 
uh, but the, he came back for this. Uh, anyways, it's, it, of course, you know, she's like, I'm from the future and I'm here to help, but they don't believe her, which, you know, they kind of, she kind of knew that she was going to run into this resistance because this is before, you know, uh, her redemption and she got reinstated into Starfleet and, and yeah, all well, that. This is like, what you learn here also is how soon after that mutiny this was like, she, this is just weeks after. Yeah. Weeks at well, it's but weeks okay, after she came onto the ship. Yeah, yes. but, but she came onto the ship six months after after the mutiny. The mutiny, right? So, yeah. um, and and remember, like Detmer was there on the Shenzhou uh, back then, right? Like, so she, she, in particular, Detmer has that you know real negative connotation of it. <laughs> I like that um, line where she's like, "Listen, I took a right cross from you three weeks ago, and I do not want to relive that experience." <laughs> yeah, to Washington, right? Um, but you know, but she does this like she starts trying to convince them, like, "I know this about you. I know that about you. You know, you like to go to this particular deck, mm -hmm. and whatever." <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I don't, it doesn't really, uh, well, then, yeah, Tilly, like you, you think I'm going to stab you in, the, in your sleep because I snore or you snore, but I won't. And she's like, thank you thank for you. Not stabbing me in my sleep. Um, and then, Mar but Miriam will believe me. And then she kind of explains to Miriam that Miriam is, or Ar is it Miriam? Ariam? I'm sorry. Uh, Ariam is going to die, uh, you know, in about a year, a year after these events, uh, and this guy just pulls out the phaser. He's like, that's it. Uh, if you say she's going to die one day, I'm going to shoot you right now. <laughs> I was like, that's a little dramatic. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, she explains that Ariam was the one who sacrificed herself to save them from control. It was, you know, um, it, was, it was a good death. Um, an honorable death. <laughs> An honorable uh, death, and they're just like, no, I would sacrifice. Uh, I would sacrifice myself for everybody here. I would do that if the situation called for it. Wouldn't all of them? I. You that's so. you know, generally that's the notion. You want everyone to, yeah, to do that. But would they all? That's more of a. That's a really a question of personal humanity and survival. They all came. Know? They all. They all took the leap to come to the. Most of these people on the bridge. They all took that leap to come to the thirty second century. They didn't know if they would survive. They didn't know if they would live. Um, you know, and and so was they, was this before or after them leaping to the thirty second century? Before. before. Right. This so this early is before. Well, season. well before, well before. But they, but the, right. the idea of but self sacrifice and all that, you know, in Starfleet. Um, well, yeah, the you know, generally, yes, it's you know the. the that's the the going notion but i i i'm in the belief that that is also dependent on the person given the heat of the moment right and what you're what are you giving up your life for or not i guess right and so yeah. you know understanding that sure i, I agree with that so, so um it, but she that that i'm assuming species is of android like she's human thinking, oh is she human She's human. She's just um, augmented because she was in a horrible like shuttle accident and she her face was destroyed and stuff. So, oh, uh, I see. OK, yeah, I that's why she, she was just like a, a, a droid kind of like data, but not quite a synthoid. So it was no, she just has way more implants than like Detmer does. Like Detmer is also yeah. augmented, but, you know, uh, not as not as extensively as, as Arium is. So um, anyway, then we go back to engineering where Stamets and um Rainer are about to take out the bug, but guess who is here to spoil it all? Michael Burnham. First season, Michael Burnham with her short hair. Uh, along with Reese, right? Um, you know, back then. And oh, I do like those like season one phasers. Those are some mean looking phasers. Um, anyway, and then uh, we see that, you know, Discovery's here at warp. So they've, so um, Burnham has convinced Arium here, but, but now, now they have this whole um, you know thing down in engineering with Burnham and Reese. I didn't really understand why they just didn't get Arium to order Burnham and Reese to stand down. Yeah, that was something that was standing out to me. I'm just like, why doesn't she just say stand down? Should she? Not, should they not listen? I, yeah, I thought of that too. I, I I think it was because you know honestly, direct line of sight. You need to see what's going on in the bridge. There wasn't that personal connection where you see see Burnham really connecting with every. With, with, and with Ariam and Ariam, like yeah. I don't have to convince. That's what Michael Burnham says. I don't have to convince the rest of you. I only have to convince Ariam because you all trust Ariam, uh -huh. right? So, um, <laughs> but but anyway, there she's on the phone with with with. Uh, also, I think it's part like Ariam doesn't quite know. Like Burnham's on the the communicator with Stamets and 
And yeah, Rainer and it, is... we're not we're not quite sure what's being relayed to the rest of them. Either. Yeah, and cool. even Arium asked Burnham is like, "All right, we're ready when you're calling." And Burnham's like, "Just one second. There's a little thing. There's we a little. There's a little snafu. thing. We have to do a little thing. A little snafu, you know? Right. Um, um, give us a minute. <laughs> give us a minute. So because um. Rainer wants wants Michael Burnham to come down and uh, talk to herself, and she's like, "We don't have time for that. It would take me too long to get there. You have to handle this, right?" So uh, first, he talks. This down is when those transporters could work, Dave. This is when those like, yeah, you, we don't need a yeah. walk all the way down there. You want the that instantaneous transport. Um, anyway, so he first he talks to Reese. He's like, "You love that thirty seconds or that twenty third century Constitution design. It's a beauty ship." You know, Gotta love them uh, smooth curves, and I agree. Smooth curves, I agree. It is know, a beautiful he, ship. He's like he's. It's right. He's he knows he knows <laughs> this about me. You know, uh, they do have and, and, and It shows last week he was listening. It was. Yeah. It does show he was listening. Although he, he clearly didn't care. He does not mean he forget. Um, he seems like he's always. Years, of course, the man listens. I'm still trying to figure out what species he is, but maybe it's a new species. Uh, uh, they they figured it out. It's. Um, Yeah, it's from it Deep looks Space like it, nine. Oh, um, it, it looks so much like Ocampa oh, ears, but uh, who had pointed ears in Deep Space Nine? Well, anyway, we, I'll let you to mull that over there. Um, so he gets Reese to stand down, but Michael Burnham doesn't believe it. She's pointing her phaser, uh, and then th okay. Basically, there's there's the call here where where Stamets says we only have thirty seconds left before Keller. you know. I'm sorry. Kellerin. What the hell's a Kellerin? Uh, yeah, he's a Kellerin species. They were. Oh boy, what episode of Deep Space Nine did they appear? Sorry to cut you off. Um, oh, well, now we need to know. Yeah. Uh, Kellerin were humanoid species native to the Alpha Quadrant. Um, Deep Space Nine Armageddon game. Armageddon. They're, uh, yeah, they're the ones with the top buns and weird ears. <laughs> game, game, DS9, top. Oh, uh, oh, uh, those guys. Yeah. Oh, the episode. Okay, that's the episode where um, where where O'Brien is um replaced, right? Or they think he's dead. I he's either somewhere. cloned or something like that. I forget. Yeah, I think it's the one where he's like cloned, and then we find out we've been following a, a clone O'Brien the whole episode by the yeah. end so okay he's been on a secret mission what such an obscure alien race to bring yeah. him inside to this character but okay um anyway so but for the times okay we me and jane timed this stamets says 30 seconds and then uh rayner leans in and gives the speech you know very quietly and very slowly i will add uh with a lot of music it goes well beyond 30 seconds guys yeah. uh, like uh they would all be dead but I did like the speech. I did like the discussion and him telling her to listen to that voice in her head and saying that you deserve it. You do, you know, you 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 can do it and you can become a hell of a captain. I'm sure when the writer wrote that, he's like, surely the, the, the actor that they have portraying this character will be able to deliver these lines within 30 seconds. <laughs> right well like, i i, 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 I think i chalk that up to direction more than writing. I think it, like it, and uh, and and they could they could have just said, 37 or whatever how many seconds it was like they give they can have stamina say anything right yeah, you know true. it's yeah. um but uh, you know the, but anyway that, that like i'm just like i'm like there's no way that it has been less than 30 seconds or, <laughs> you know uh by this point but anyway she, michael burnham puts that phaser down and they break the warp bubble here uh and then uh this allows um now rainer can get in there with his hand Right in that device and pull out that bug. I was kind key. of hoping it would take his hand. I was like a little bit of me was hoping that this would cause him to have his hand age so poor, badly and poorly that he would actually lose his hand and then he'd end up having a robotic hand for the rest of the season. I, I think that would have been really cool. Um, Maybe a little just, too on the. He just puts like, a black glove on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He looks, looks like too. Luke Skywalker. He only um, takes it off every now and then, but you know, you, you can tell it's robotic. Well, I thought that, like, at the end, it was kind of like him. He was favoring his hand. I thought that maybe there was going to be some kind of long term thing where he got like some kind of temporal necrosis or something, but mm -hmm. I don't know. 
We'll see if that goes anywhere. Because kind of after kind of spoils the milk, if you will. That that is this whole like soupy relationship between him and Burnham. He's like, oh, I just sacrificed my hand for you, basically. You know, could right. could really sour a character's perspective. Yeah. Um... Like, I thought I, we anti this episode. You you you, you can't have that. They, they got to go forward together here. Yeah. Right. I Absolutely. want them to work together, obviously too. But you know, it's just like it yeah. seems like they're they're kind of planting that sort of doubt, if you will. Yeah. Well, I, I, we'll see if it goes anywhere or not. But um, but I, I you know they have a little speech here, like go get Doctor Cobra look at your hand, and and they they admit that they kind of they understand each other both better now, and they're more they're a better for, uh, captain first officer team after this episode. So like that. Uh, then Stamets pulls the dead bug out of the the console here or whatever, uh, and then um, Adira shows up and says, uh, "How come I just blinked and six hours went by? Is it anything to do with your little bug?" Um, yeah. It's like I would want to squish you. He's like, is that why I blinked and six hours went by? Yeah. <laughs> yes, more or less. Uh, Detmer's like, there's no way I would believe you back then. <laughs> 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 They're all like talking around the bridge, uh, you know, having a good laugh about how they used to be, um, which was kind of interesting. Uh, then, then Rainer comes to the bridge. Uh, I thought he was hiding his hand, but he's, he's not. I thought like you know he was showing us the wrong hand at first. I had to go back and watch. I it, wish he no. kind of just gave like a like a little <laughs> a little thumbs up, just a little, just a little. I'm okay. Just a little. Thumb he did. Back. He lifted his hand up and showed it. He did. He, he did. showed. I, he showed it. But I, I was hoping yeah. he like you know just a little. Yeah. But I, at first, I thought he showed the other hand, and then I was like, "Is this some kind of misdirect?" But no, it was all in my head. Um, and uh, but it, and it wasn't. So he's fine. Um. And so, yeah, then he, he's like, hey, Commander Reese, your theory was really good. Good job. Like, I'm going to try to be an encouraging boss now. This is going to be something revolutionary for me, where I actually tell people they do a good job when they do it. Um, you know, <laughs> I would have loved to see how he really yeah, operated on his ship. old, as captain before, uh, how Jellico he was. Anyway, so now they're good. But now, so now they figured out that Mock, Lock and Mall, they don't know where they are. Their trail is ended, and they don't know where to go. But this was a little get... weird to this ending. This is the only thing that I think in this whole episode that I didn't find uh, satisfying is how everybody was just happy, and they have no leads. They, they have nothing. no leads, and and there's a lot at stake here. She just saw them all dead in the future. Yeah. You know, um, we, so we were ahead of the game, and now we're we're a six hour trail behind, and we think we know where they're going. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Right. Well, we found out in the original. So in that timeline, they saw that was based on Discovery being trapped in the time loop for a long time before they were eventually rescued. But by that point, it was too late. So this is now a different a series of events are going to play out here and uh, and we'll see what happens next. And that is the episode um, in terms of the plot summary. Um, Adam, I think you had a fun fact to share with us. I do. If you want to go back to when when uh, Jet Reno was talking to Stamets. Sure. Back. Um, she she walked away and referred, you know, don't go into a Rothko painting. And I go, oh, what's that about? So no idea who Rothko was. It was a guy named Mark Rothko, who um, is closely identified with the New York school, uh, a circle of painters that emerged during the 1940s. Um, Rothko's work was characterized by rigorous attention to formal elements such as color, shape, balance, and depth, composition, and scale. But I like this part here, and this is where probably the reference uh, Rothko paintings are characterized by expanding dimensions and in an increasingly simplified use of form, brilliant hues, and broad, thin washes of color. Um, his large floating rectangle of color, which engulfs the spectator, he explored with rare mastery and nuance. So, interesting little uh, reference. That yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 I had no idea what it meant when she said it. I was like, yeah. oh man, that's that's a. I'm sure that will. That, so, did you know like what a Rothko painting was before she, she said it? Yeah, no, no clue. No, I, 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 I didn't know the artist's name, but I have seen the work. Well, once I saw it, up. I go, oh, okay, I get that yeah. now. And I, but again, this is the cool thing about this character is that she references things that you got to go look for. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna see if we can like look, you know, like maybe look at some of the images. I guess yeah, this is what a Rothko yeah. painting looks like. There, okay, yep. pretty much. Okay. I feel like I've seen this this style. Yeah, and I've been like honestly, I've seen this stuff, but I had no idea it was from the fifties. Like this is 
you know, seems a little more, more advanced than that. But anyway, um, cool stuff. Uh, Dave, can I just share some stuff I just found on uh, Sonequa Martin Green talking about this episode? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Go ahead. So she was uh, referring to this uh, this episode. Uh, jumping through these moments reinforces that the journey with Rainer and herself while making strong case for her style personality invo involved leadership. Before they get thrown through time, Rainer viewed her familiarity with the crew as a weakness by the journey's end. He had a much different perspective, as we discussed. Um, Martin Green says, getting to revisit some of Burnham's greatest hits with an outsider riding shotgun was an unexpected gift to this episode. And to quote her here, oh my goodness, I think they hit me with with it just be, just as we started shooting it, the actor says of being told uh, on the premise of facing face the strange. I like to know things ahead of time, not too far ahead, but sometime. So I knew it was coming, but man, I didn't know how fulfilling it was going to be when until we were there. Sean Cochran wrote the script, and Lee Rose, one of our most uh, beloved directors, directed the episode. And man, there was some visual components that we'd never seen before with some of the elements from cinematography that we hadn't done before. Uh, Martin says the complexity of having season one Burnham go mano a mano with season five Burnham, even though we're doing the stunt choreography with with Chris McGuire and his team, we were talking about how to mirror the movements of these two Burnhams because of their same person. Uh, but we also have to show how much Burnham has grown through the years. So it was uh, she certainly enjoyed it. I love I love that we were able to see the contrast and we were able to see the growth of the journey because you sort of forgot about it when you you go to present day Burnham. Right. Well, remember, like Michael Burnham before she was the mutineer was like an accomplished first officer yes, in her own yes, right, and yes. had had many many years in Starfleet before that. So yeah. So uh, for for me, this sure. episode was was great. I you know I I think I again love this show more than most on this channel, and um and it brought me back to some of the best episodes I think I remember, and I really love the end of season two. By the way, I still love too. Well. I'm glad someone does. <laughs> I also do. I, I'm, I'm with you. I loved season two. That was when we were introduced to Captain Pike in the Enterprise. Yeah. He, he was the best part. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, for me, like, I guess when I look back on that season two, mostly what I don't like is all the interdrama with Spock, Sarek, Amanda, and and Mike. Right. Uh, I feel like it's mostly it. It just feels push forced because. They're like, well, how are we going to make the, our main character relevant? We'll just make her like the stepsister of Spock, who's his other. You yeah, know, that was a weird character. and all that. But you know what? Going back, I mean, like, I think, I think so far in season five, like, what are we? Four episodes in now. Mm -hmm. This is the strongest season. Like, the oh, writing is great. I, I am in right now. Yeah, the I, no, I, 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 in this episode. Well, let's, um, let's, let's. Sorry, you got something? No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just about to go to ratings, but mm -hmm. yeah. But you remember uh, when we, we saw like the um oh my goodness when you when the, it was the guy from CSI and and it was the reference back to see the original series the uh the archway we walked through it like there was so many great things in in discovery and I think we should we should really break it down someday and just really well when the show's it. over we can do a retrospective yeah. too you know so what, 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 well, because there's some really horrible things and I'll give you that yeah. Yeah, like stormy weather. Okay, um, comes to mind. Well, see, me. that's what I'm. I'm hoping we'll kind of get out of the season is sort of the the thing the the open threads of storylines they didn't quite close up on because they didn't. It almost seemingly they had no definitive direction with this show until they finally did have a definitive direction, and now they can sort of go back and touch upon the things. I think I enjoyed this episode because it was very much. It was a mixture of bottle episode and like clip episode. Every show, especially in their last season, always has to have that one clip episode where mm -hmm. they'll show you something. And this was that in a way. But like you said, Adam, in the article where they're like, you get to jump through all these great moments with the third person, you know, tag along. And they, and it's almost like a, uh, christmas tale sort of you know screw chopping through different timelines stuff like that like it was it was an interesting perspective and i really enjoyed that about this episode and how they, and, they portrayed these these trope of greatest hits and bottle episodes how they did it this way it was, it was refreshing and if i could add one more thing too is like you know i don't think anybody really loved picard coming out of season three was it or two 
Uh, I think two, it's, yeah. season two of Picard seems to be universally the most disliked one of the three seasons. So. Yeah, but, I mean, we sure love season three, you know, so I am hoping yeah. that we... I just watched Steve Shive's whole review of season three. He's like, the only reason we like season three is because season two and season one were very good. So <laughs> um, I well, think he might thing, have okay, a point. I, this is the other thing that I've always I've always believed about Discovery is every season starts off pretty rough. And I think that leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth and it distracts them from the good that every season always lands because the show always lands well by the mm -hmm. end of the season mm -hmm. and um by like even season four beginning of it i wasn't too into it but by the end of the season i was hooked and i thought it was one of the best like interpretations of a star trek story that i'd watched yeah. at the time you know yeah. last season i liked the galaxy too. it was great last season i just thought they should have cut they probably should have done a 10 episode season instead of 13 i thought that just the story just went I, on I, I would agree with that but it was still good yeah, it was still good. And, and yeah, there there was it, it needed to be tightened up, and I think they kind of they've gotten to that point now. But it's almost now like I want more episodes late. because I'm like I'm digging this Rainer character. Like I said, I feel like he's a better match for Burnham than Saru was as first officer in terms of the dynamic of the crew, and uh, you know, and I, I just I enjoyed that. So anyway, we'll get to the ratings. Uh, question here for Adam: Adam, what show are you on tomorrow? Oh. Uh... I, I th well, we're on a debate, aren't we? Uh, yes, we're doing a debate nine tomorrow. I think we are. Yeah, uh, yeah debate, nine. debate nine with debate nine. Uh, the gentleman from the shuttle pod show. Um, it might Cartier. it might have been because I said you look good. You 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 let you reds your color. Maybe that's what uh, Davin's responding. Well, to. not only that, I owe Davin some questions, and I will get that to you tonight, Davin. If you're still losing, <laughs> <laughs> so he's also chasing well, you know, for homework. Hopefully, Davin's also doing his homework and watching those movies for Hold Up on Monday because Good we point. just do that last Monday, and he's like, "Ah, I'm like, all right, I guess we're gonna reschedule this." <laughs> so. All right, well now, he guys, do no his homework of his own. With no further ado, let's get to our ra ratings. Oh, oh, by the way, Face the Strange. The title comes from a David Bowie song. Changes. Uh, uh, that's, that's what the it's so that influences your rating. Uh, all good. Okay. Um, like I said, I feel like this is pretty good, really strong episode. Considering it's a bottle episode, mid season, there's not a ton that really happens, but like, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm, I'm going nine point three, guys. I mean, this is good. All right, Murphy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a nine. It's a, definitely a solid nine from me. Um, there's a few things <clears throat> that would like kind of stood out to me and i was like why and when that happens it takes me a bit out of the story but so far from this season best episode of the season so far looking forward to more if i had to guess michael chance he he'll probably if he if he's be been following the last few episodes nine this would be a 10 for him but it'd be 11 <laughs> so i don't know hopefully he'll let us know yeah uh okay adam you're up next well, I gave Under the Twin Moons a nine, so I'm I'm gonna move. This is my favorite so far. I'm gonna move this nine point five. Nine and a half, okay. And Ashley, I'm also gonna do a nine and a half. If All we right. had gotten a Lorca scene or a Pike scene, it would have been a ten. Oh, that would have been great. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we are at even oh, number one. Or if we, if we had gotten um uh what's her name uh who Michelle Yeoh's you know? character. Yeah, oh, Georgiou. 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 Yeah. She's, too busy, been... she's, she's too busy filming her movie right now. I know, I know. Well, that's like... the thing. They could have made a nice little tie into Section 31 yeah. in this episode. They could have had her They show could have, definitely, like, yeah. But I, I feel like know. they shot this even before they had signed Michelle Yeoh to that film. <laughs> like, like They more is... than likely did, yeah, shoot yeah. this yeah, before probably. Michelle Yeoh was signed on. I feel like that happened after the Oscars. She was just like... Oh yeah, Star Trek. I love this. Let's do this. And like, let's but you this. just won an Oscar. I still let's do this. Let's yeah. Do it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, IMDb at the moment has a seven point two rating with one hundred and thirty two votes so far. So uh, we're averaging nine point three. Uh, so between the you know us and them, it's about an eight point three. Uh, clearly, it's 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 um, the highest rated of the season uh, for us and for IMDb so far. And we mentioned Sean Cochran was the writer. And we jumped around to a lot of different years, guys. Like uh, 3191, 2256, 57, 58, 3189, and 3218. Uh, so maybe the most year, amount of years ever seen in one episode. 
At least I hope Sean Cochran writes more Star Trek because this mm-hmm. stuff is good. Yeah, like, no, like yeah. he did a great I job with this. Um, yeah. and, and so Strange New he... Worlds. Give Sean Cochran some Strange New Worlds episodes. Oof. Yeah. Him and an Mbanga. Mm. Yeah, Oof. well, he might. He I might. Yeah. yeah. It's not technically like his very first episode of Discovery was Despite Yourself, which was like that mirror episode, unifer, um, mirror universe episode back in like season one. Which I first... remember being good. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like there, there's there. I think you guys, the boys got some talent there. Let's get him writing some more scripts. Um, and uh, just want to look ahead to the next episode, at least in terms of title. Um, I think we have a title for this. It's called Mirrors, everybody. Oh, oh. we're getting a mirror episode. I hope. I it, hope it's. I hope it is. Maybe, yeah. But maybe. I don't but know how they'll convince. do it because they're apparently too far apart from the mirror universe yeah. now to travel to it. So I don't know how they're going to do it. But if it's that's a mirror what, episode, I'm interested to see how. Yeah, because that's what Kovic tells us that, like, that, yeah, there hadn't been a crossover in like hundreds of years. Of, yeah, you know that and that was going back a couple of years. So maybe, maybe it's a misdirect. Maybe it won't be mirror universe uh, at all, and it will be something completely different. Um, but you know, if, imagine if it ends up being a mirror universe. We should convince Davin to come in for a review. <laughs> oh my god! No, oh my god! That would be. He hates Discovery and Mirror episodes. I know. It, yeah. it would be interesting, that's for sure. If you, if you could get like Discovery, <laughs> the Mirror Universe, and Section 31 in one episode, there's got to be something in Season 2 that has Yeah, that he doesn't really like the time travel stuff either, right? No, um, no he sometimes. probably would have despised this episode. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. No, he wouldn't like this one. So, uh, anyway, but, you know, that's he, he's on the other divisions. You know, this mm-hmm. is the episode reviews division. Um Okay, well, uh, with all that uh, said, uh, it's been a, it's been a great conversation. I've enjoyed talking about Face the Strange with all y'all, and I'm looking forward to talking mirrors in the near future. Uh, make sure to check out all our great content here on Live Long and Podcast, like Debate Nine, which will be on tomorrow night uh, with uh, you know with with Adam. We got a great crew, many divisions, uh, many different things like our quizzes and trivias and our radio theaters and the locutors of trek uh, and our and our episode and tv reviews so check out all our great stuff here on live long and podcast as well as the united federation of podcasts our, our sister podcasts like hold up like we mentioned earlier which you know they're coming soon with their bi- is the bicycle movies you're doing monday uh, bicycle movies uh, it's it's long overdue but yeah it's uh we're watching Wee's big adventure uh the triplets of belleville and premium rush um which it's going to be a cycling good time i like to cycle our guest likes to cycle davin chris i'd like to get back on that show sometime in the future if you keep me in mind absolutely sir absolutely i'll come back one day you know i think i i was set to do a bunch of episodes i i'm set to do one i don't know when it's coming up though i'll i'll message you um it's we basically whenever you were doing it bi-weekly and then Davin's like, life is too much for me right now. We have to yeah. do this like it's a lot. Times a week like you guys, best. yeah, yeah. Like when you go from one kid to two, I not that I really know. It, I oh yeah, it's a lot. When you go from one to yeah. two, yeah, and yeah, and three even. So <laughs> going to th- going to three is like just it's nothing. Adding a third on once you have two is is not much, but going from one to two is the biggest change right yeah. and yeah he's, he's in the heat he of all that to be right? going through it right now so yeah all the power yeah. to davin it's yeah, an exhausting it's feat um yeah. and yeah we're, we're just kind of getting to the episodes when we, we can get to them but yes you guys will definitely be on future episodes for sure right oh, also in the federation we have hey did you see this one with jason and steven talking all kinds of movies in depth uh all so, the time so yeah those guys right now it's jason's birthday month so he's called it uh, wrestling with my mortality month where basically he's subjecting steven and a guest for each episode to films with wrestling themes they started with a couple of good ones and they're getting into some weeds movies that I've never heard of. That the one they did really last kind of night was Santo and the Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman. That's a yeah. wrestling match. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Apparently it's a movie you can find on YouTube or something. Oh my this, god. These guys, they put on almost like three and a half hour podcast episodes. They're a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy listening to them. Um if you guys are want to be on that, I'm sure it can happen. But yeah, it's it's uh, I'm supposed to show up on that podcast at some point. You know, uh, 
they also have a schedule of 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 guests cool. too. But yeah, great Good great staff. podcast. Check them out. And speaking of which, I've I have i have invited Jason on to come to the Super Mater Brothers podcast because we're talking Survivor 46 every Wednesday right now. If you like Survivor. And uh, X-Rated, the X-Men, the Anime Review Show with Andre and Davin, talking about the X-Men 97 cartoon episodes that have been dropping each week. I just watched the newest one today. It was pretty good. Um, so was. look out for them. Uh, and Eamon on Track, my son, with music podcasts as well, as well as Trivial Debates and the Hellbound That's Podcast. That should be coming up on Sunday. Uh, Trivial Debates? Yeah, Sunday's the 20. Well, okay, not this 21st, but we have had to reschedule the 28th. So April 28th, Trivial Debates. Avatar the Last Airbender theme. Um, yeah, I just gotta do a few things, but yeah, that's coming. It's coming. I promise. It's coming. All right. Well, thanks everyone again. Uh, thanks for uh, you know check out our other shows as mentioned, and uh, I think we'll we'll leave you with this quote for everybody for the night. Uh, you have a you have a good one, everybody. Live long and podcast. Say some temporal unpleasantness were to hit the ship. Um, to nullify it, I just need to calibrate a chroniton stabilizer to partition world lines per Scarabelli's constant, right? Theoretically, yes, so long as you factor dimensional variations. Huh. Are you stuck in a time loop right now, Stamets? <laughs> what? What? All right, let's what? see you next time. No, me? No. Disco, disco, discover. Season 5 Review Disco Discovery Season 5 Review Disco Disco Discovery Starfleet In the 32nd century